We talked about this before, but it needs to be repeated. Number one, you need to do exactly what I say. Start working on you. Don't try to figure out what's going on. She decided a long time ago that the marriage is over with. Months, maybe years ago. Fact. And I've learned this after working with hundreds, hundreds of men. Hundreds. I lost count. That's why I like to say I want to save the man, not the marriage. When you save the man, the marriage could be saved. When you try to save the marriage, mm, I find that the man has to do a lot of compromising. And I'm not talking about meeting in the middle the compromise that every relationship needs. If she already decided she wants out, let her go. Date long, marry slow. And if you're going to divorce, divorce fast. Most of your trauma, most of your hurt, most of your black-pilled attitude is going to come from the trauma that you get from the divorce process. Even more than some of the nasty things you might say to each other. The divorce process is so damaging, and I blame the court system. It's horrible. Horrible. If you ever slammed a door, slammed a drawer, threw something, pounded on something, you're violent. You can't be trusted. She's scared of you. The wife who once loved you is now scared of you. Gentlemen, it's all a game, and every day there's a new man experiencing this, and you've been through it. It's going to hurt. It's going to suck. You're going to waste a lot of money, but trust me on this one here. Do it fast. There are so many men who write me, I should have listened to you, I should have listened to you, or I wish you were around when I was going through my divorce. Letter after letter after letter. So do exactly what I say. It's better to save the man than save the marriage. If you save the man, maybe the marriage might have a chance. Don't try to get her back. Get you back. That's important. For the next 90 days, this is what I want you to do. She just told you she doesn't want to be married anymore. Now what? Here's my prescription. So the doctor is going to write you a script right now. Number one, walk five miles a day. You need to do that. It's going to get your body in shape. You are going to lose fat. You are going to trim up. You are going to have more blood flow, which delivers oxygen to your brain in places that it hasn't been in a long time. Five miles a day. If you want to do two and a half miles in the morning, two and a half miles at night, whatever. Five miles a day. That's important. I'm not sure what that... What is five miles as far as steps? You people who do the steps thing. Oh, I did 10,000 steps or something like that. Figure out what that is. Your phone can track that for you. Five miles a day. Five miles a day is going to take about an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes if you do it straight through. Five miles. Number two. Work out three to four times a week, high intensity, high intensity. You know how much you rest in between sets? Pretend it's you and a partner that is working out. You do your bench press. You go off and sit on another bench. You go off and wait. Or you pretend you have a partner that's coming and sitting, you know, laying down on the bench and then doing his 10 reps. That's how long you wait in between sets. No chit-chatting. Work out with a purpose, three to four times a week. I can get into the specifics of that later, and I might even do a short course on that. Number three, eliminate sugar, minimize carbs, increase protein. You are going to be tempted to drink a lot. It probably wouldn't hurt during the first year of marital separation or divorce to eliminate alcohol. I know I did that. One year, didn't touch alcohol, because I knew I would have a tendency to reach for the bottle and not beer, alter your reality as quickly as possible. So most people will uh, smoke weed, do shots, to go from zero to 60 as quick as possible. If you cannot do that for one year, you're going to be fine. And then you'll reevaluate 
your substance use and or abuse, or determine if it is abuse. Eliminate sugar, minimize carbs, increase protein. Think about that. You're walking five miles a day. You're eating well. All of a sudden, you're getting better. You're improving yourself. Even though your social marital situation is going to hell, there's one thing in your life that's living, that's alive, that's growing, that's thriving, and that's your body. Mentally, you can be confused, going through a lot of stuff, but take care of this. And eventually, it'll work its way in here. Remember, and a lot of guys do this, so I'm going to go on medication. You're not depressed. You are discouraged. The antidote for that is courage, not medication. I want you to think hard about that. What you need is courage, not a pill. Number four, get eight hours of sleep daily. I started going to bed early. I go to bed at eight o'clock. Yes, you are a buzzkill for everyone else who is sleep deprived and on the obesity and diabetes track, you are different. You need to get off of that path. Get eight hours of sleep. I don't care if it's nine to five or eight to four. You need your eight hours of sleep. You might say, but I can't sleep eight hours or there's no way I could go to bed that early. Get up super early. Get up at three o'clock so that by the time, get up at three o'clock in the morning and start your work, check your email, iron your clothes, whatever. Get some things done before you go to work. By the time 8 o'clock rolls around, you will be so tired, you can't imagine staying up to your normal 10 or 11 o'clock. Number five, drink more water than you already do. I'm not going to be one of these guys that says, you need to drink eight glasses of water a day. Just drink more than you already do. If you say, I can't drink that much water, I just can't drink, I just can't, you know, I've never been a big water drinker, then squeeze some lemon and lime in the glass. Get a soda stream and make carbonated water. A lot of times the fizziness, which I love, I make a bottle of soda stream water every day. I don't always put flavoring of any type in it. I just like the fizziness, the carbonation. Just drink more water than you already do. If you are working in an office building, every time you pass a water fountain, take a sip. Think about it. Just make that part of your life. Number six, eliminate TV watching. TV is going to exacerbate and trigger a lot of things in your head mentally. It probably wouldn't hurt to eliminate the TV. If you don't, like, you know, a lot of people, when they quit alcohol, they got to get rid of all the alcohol. I was never one of those that had to get rid of the alcohol. I actually still have a couple bottles that I've had for 20 years, you know, that I might pour a little shot, a little cordial or something like that. Some bottles have lasted me two decades. I got a bottle right up there with a, it's a rum and passion fruit and banana liqueur that I made. It's 20 years old. It's great. It's a great dessert kind of thing. Just a little bit in a glass. Sweet, nice, tasty to have with dessert or something like that or share with a friend. But some people need to eliminate all alcohol from the house. Same thing with TV. If you just come in and you hit that remote or you got the TV in your bedroom, take the TV out. If you're not disciplined with television, then you need to remove it and turn the furniture in your living room towards each other to actually encourage conversation. You go into most living rooms or rec rooms or TV rooms, whatever, TV rooms, and the furniture is all facing the wall where the TV is on. and you might have had a family where no one looked at each other. Think about it. In most households all across the world, from about 5, 30, 6 o'clock until 10 or 11 o'clock at night, people are facing a flat screen. All the chairs are facing a flat screen. That is it. And you're allowing the programming of Hollywood and P. Doe files to create a new normal for you. You don't need a new normal. You create your new normal. You don't need someone else to create it for you. Get rid of the TV, or better yet, get rid of cable, cable. Get rid of news, never watch the news. 
never watch the news. The news is meant to influence you. It's not meant to inform you. It's meant to reprogram and educate you. Get rid of cable. And if you want to stream, uh, if you want to watch Netflix or Amazon Prime, do it. Turn it on. Watch the movie. Turn it off. The TV is not to be on. It is not filler noise in your home. Oh, I just turned the TV on in the morning while I'm getting ready for work. Uh-uh. Stop. You're going to listen to a podcast in the morning while you're taking a shower, while you're getting yourself ready. None of this. I just have the TV on while I'm getting ready. Mm-mm. You don't need it. You don't need And if you defend that, then that tells me you're addicted to it. Get rid of the TV. Number seven, talk to God while you walk. I don't believe in God. That's a story. That's a myth. Talk. Talk. Catharsis. God's listening whether you believe in him or not. But talk to God when you do your five-mile walk. Somehow, some way, give thanks for the trees, the bushes, the deer, the fox, the rabbits, the people who smile at you. Best time to walk is in the morning while it's dark, before the world is up. You'll find yourself much easier there. And it's just easier to do your walk in the morning than it is later on when people are awake. And you experience a different world early in the morning before the world is up. Number eight, confide only in a male friend or a brother. No women. Not your wife who's leaving you. Not your parents. I would call my mom. This is, you know, 20 years ago when I went through my divorce. And I'll never forget, my dad said to me, he says, you know, how about you talk to me? He says, your mother is really taking this hard. And this is the beauty of the differences between men and women. I knew I could cry on my mom's shoulder, but she was internalizing it. My pain became her pain, and I did not want to make my mother suffer with my pain. So she's what, mom's 80 now? So she was 60 when I got divorced. And she was really hurting with me. And my dad said, she's losing sleep, she's feeling it. If you want to talk, talk to me. And at that point I stopped moaning, groaning, complaining, crying. And when I say crying, I don't mean like tears, just like crying the blues to my mom. Moms are wonderful like that, but they won't tell you to slow it down or go easy because they tend to internalize everything. I think that's how women are wired. That's how moms are wired, even for their, their grown children. doesn't matter how old you are. doesn't matter how old the mom is. They always grieve, cry, and feel for their children, always. So that was good, and that was probably some of the best advice my father ever gave me. So talk to a brother, a male friend, father. Number nine, think before you talk, no impulsive words. Not unlike the Miranda warning when they say, you know, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Anything you say to the woman who is divorcing you is going to be used against you somehow, some way, somewhere to either separate you from your children, make your life miserable, take your shit, take your money. Let's get real. I'm talking real here. This is not pie in the sky crap. This is something you're never going to hear in church. You're never going to hear this at a men's retreat, a men's Bible study. And I'm a Christian. And I'm telling you how it is. This is real talk right here. This is real. Some of you might mean nothing. Others to you, these are words of life. No impulsive words. Uh, number 10, start a side hustle job that only you know about. I don't care if all you do is restore tools. I don't care if you buy books at the thrift store and sell them on eBay. I don't care if you restore gas grills. I don't, you know, I'm just pulling stuff off the top of my head. I don't care if you are a ghostwriter. I don't care if you restore tobacco pipes. I don't care if you build something and sell it. A cash side hustle. Something that you know about. Something that no one else knows about. Just do it. Do it. It's good for your psyche to be able to earn. It's good to be able to create something when so many things in your life are being destroyed. You are now building something. Because the whole divorce process is a tearing down, not a building up. And most guys look back on the wasted years, wasted emotions, wasted money, period of time in their life. Yeah, I was in a tailspin for three years, five years. You can avoid all that. I wish I had someone like me talking to me. I felt so damn isolated. I didn't have, I didn't have the help. That I needed. And one of the biggest temptations is to feel that you are the only one going through it. Hence, I'm going to be starting a 
Zoom group. It's a paid group where you meet with me once a week in a group and we talk about the crap you're going through to help you be normal, bring some normalcy to your life. That'll be helpful to you. You'll go to your attorney, he will charge you $300 an hour, want a $2,500 retainer, and you will get hardly anything for that. Anything else you buy in life, there's guarantees. There's a couple things you don't get guarantees for, and that number one is marriage counseling. They don't offer guarantees or money back if it doesn't work, and same thing with attorneys. They will spend your money, take the long way around everything, eke out a little bit of your kids, so you go from dad to just visitor every other weekend, and then you can go to a diner with them one night a week or have a sleepover, so you are now their visitor and not their father. That's the way the system works. Deal with it. I hate to say that. Save your money. Save your money. You're going to save money by eliminating cable right there. That's what a hundred bucks a month, minimum a hundred bucks a month. You're going to save money by not buying alcohol. Think about that. That's amazing. Just that alone is going to save you two to three hundred dollars a month easily. Easily. And number 11, let her go. Let her go. A man gets desperate, says and does stupid things when he tries to get a woman back. Work to get you back. When I coach and provide counsel, I don't do therapy anymore. When I provide counsel and consulting with men, my thing is this, don't try to get her back, get you back. Because in the process, this is what happens a lot of times with women. They feel like, I got myself back. The real me is here. While the man is just losing himself, being poured out like a bottle of whiskey. And there's nothing left of you after a year or two of the process. Like I said, most of the trauma is going to come from the divorce process, not the divorce itself. It's going to blow your mind. So there's 11 things to help you when your wife says she doesn't want to be married anymore. Do exactly, exactly what I say, and you're going to be okay. Finish your coffee, and I'll see you Monday morning on the Daybreak Show, and you probably will see me with a couple of videos this weekend on a couple things I'm working on, some things that I think you'll be interested in. Cheers, my brother.